Uh, as usual, I'm going to deal with this in four different stages. I, I would just want to say uh, uh, for a moment about these four stages, which I'll talk talk about in a moment, is is that there are kind of rule that you follow in watercolor, but it doesn't have to be this. It's like like any rules and guides that you have, they're there to be broken. And uh, I, I have a couple of paintings in mind for future demonstrations where we will do just that. But in principle, because with watercolor you work from light to dark, um, the stages that I'm suggesting that you might follow here uh, are, are the stages one normally uses. It might be that if you're working very much or quickly, you might concertina those stages and they, they overlap, but, but there will be the four stages that we've been using up until now. Um, so a word about uh, the composition, uh, and then I'll move into the first stage, which will be uh, the drawing, what I'm going to draw on the paper. Now, that, before I talk about that, let's just have a word on the materials. This is uh, Sanders uh, cold pressed, or not, is sometimes called, um, cotton paper, uh, as opposed to a wood pulp paper or anything. It's a good quality. Uh, this is 300 grams or 140 pounds paper. Uh, uh, and the, the cotton aspect of it means that it's quite absorbent and good for taking the water, which um, is all to do with water colour. Uh, the paints that I've got here, the pigments I'm, I'm using here, are the ones that Lois sent out on her information to you. Um, at the moment, there, there are no changes necessarily, and, but I will talk about each colour as I use them. And the brushes that I'm likely to use for this uh, are the same brushes that were also mentioned by Lois in her email to you all. Uh, and I will also mention those brushes as I go along. So that's the materials and, and the equipment uh, on this. With the first stage in setting up a watercolour, uh, it is about making drawings on the page, on the paper, uh, but I also think it's about thinking through the composition. So I've sort of bundled composition and drawing into one stage. What I want to do, just to alter it very slightly, is, is I, I want to add a bit of softness to, it, it seems quite a harsh uh, graphic sort of subject at the moment, uh, unlike the one we did initially where it was much softer and more fluid. So I want to bring a little bit of that in and, and how I propose doing that is um, in the main by uh, suggesting that there is a tree on this side and in fact there could well have been, I can't remember, uh, alleyways of trees that these markets take place in and, and I'm going to bring some of the branches in here over over this background so I'm, I'm going to that's going to be a light area initially there's going to be some leaves coming over here and that's going to be casting some dapple light down this area of the image uh, th that's the main aspect of how I, how I hope to soften it um, just by doing those two things now if you if, if you want to keep it exactly as it is here that's absolutely fine but uh, that's what I intend doing on this one. Okay, uh, the, the drawing, let me get the photograph in front of me, see what I'm doing. Okay, uh, you've, you've got this slash of white pop-up um, tents here un under which the market is taking place. So, um, oh, and just one other point, uh, um, and that is to do with the eye level. Um, I took this photograph and you can see by looking at what's happening with the perspective that it, uh, my eye level is about there where I've laid my pencil in a line that goes along there. And the reason I know that 
and the reason why it's important to be aware of that is because as most things are going away from us, that is from our right to our left, there's a, there's a very obvious movement that way. Um, anything which is above our eye level will come down to it. And you can see this rooftop here. You can see these rooftops. You can even see the line of these tents here, assuming they are in some kind of line, uh, coming down to that. And under it, you can get e even this little bit here, which is below the eye level, is very marginally coming up, as is anything else here. And as the angles become more extreme, so the angle of things moving down to a vanishing point become more extreme. Just bear that in mind. It, it, it will help uh, a, a little when you're making your drawings. Okay, so a drawing here which puts, um, I made a couple of little marks just to get me started. This is the uh, top of the pop-up tent and it sort of comes down to there and talking about things uh, going down this is above my eye level and in fact it is a, a marked downward line there um, and this one so Got got in the first tent suggested here. And action's going to be taking place within all of these uh, gaps you see in between the legs. There's another tent that comes like that, and this one we're going to sort of goes to about there, let's say. And maybe there's another little one here. So we got this line of pop-up uh, tents, which traders seem so fond of. Again, we've got we've got that sort of line, very roughly where the legs come down to, assuming they do. Um, they are in some kind of line. Now, I, I'm also going to change uh, this here and um, bring bring uh, this tent here around so it's facing you. Let me explain what I'm doing. Uh, it's a little bit like we did with the Italian market here, where you've got all these uh, umbrellas going down like that, and and then this area here i can't remember what the photograph was like the italian one but i've deliberately had that facing me so i'm going to do that a little bit more here by suggesting that there's a tent which is coming coming around here now on this edge and this edge and indeed all the edges here uh, I want to try and avoid putting too much detail in. So when it comes to painting it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just run over that quickly. So we've got, we've got a, something like that ha happening. Okay, let's have a look at how we'll approach the buildings at the top. Um, they are at this much more extreme angle like that, uh, that I was talking about.
and that's the roof up there. I, I'm going to put in, add some chimneys as opposed to just the aerials that you can see there. Um, just give a little more interest and there's a roof that goes up like that. Like so. Now when I come to paint this, I, I don't want to get too bogged down in the details in, in what's going on in the background here. Uh, and, and I will simplify it as, as much as I can. There is a, a window there. If you look at the, the, the way that line is drawn, the angle of it is all to do with coming down to your eye level. There's one there. Um, I, might, I might put a balcony in of some description here and then uh, another window. Now as we're coming down here the tops of these windows are, are actually flattening out because they are pretty much on our eye level. And there's a big one here that let's make that, that that's going that way and a big one that's actually going something like that. I don't want to get too much more specific than than that. Something going on there. Okay. Uh, the trees and everything will we'll come back to our own. Let's stick another chimney up there. And um, so we've got a few chimneys and things of that nature running in the background. Um, right, let's put this table in and then I'll, I'll relate some figures to the table. So uh, the table is at quite an extreme angle. It's, I think it's flipped up anyway, um, which makes it even more of an extreme angle here. So let's just see if we, if I'm going to get this right. The table will, something like that, comes out and it's slightly odd because it is tipped up. I mean, like that, and it's got these interesting legs. I'm going to put those in just to help me recall where they are. Um, and I'll see where we go. That's maybe not quite so extreme, something along those lines. Right, and that gets lost in here. So let's see if that's going to work. Uh, the, the fruits and everything else that are on here, um, let's just make some sort of marks which might be uh, appropriate, but we don't need to get too bogged down in that just in a moment. And all the different fruits are on here. And if I'm going to do something else, um, which um, I hadn't done before. Um, I think I'm going to move some of these people around. This lady here that's bending over. Uh, incidentally, I, I think Lois sent you this drawing that I did. Uh, this, this was a drawing I did from the photograph. I didn't actually draw this. That's why it looks so similar to the photograph. I think I was just exploring values, darks and lights uh, in making this, this drawing. But I'm thinking of putting this lady who's bending over out here somewhere. Uh, these two characters who are silhouetted against the white of their white van, uh, I, I like that very much. So I want to make sure I've got room for them. So let's, um, let's put this lady. Uh, now you, you must make up your minds where you're going to put all these people. If you feel more comfortable putting her exactly where she is, in the um, photograph, then that is just fine. So I'm going to, I want her to be half in and out of the shades. So I'm going to stick her here. She's, um, she's leaning over. So you only see a little bit of her head and she's obviously rummaging around in, in the vegetables. And
which is something like that, I would say. I'll come back. Would that be about the right size? Um, yeah, let's let's just put in the vehicle now. Got an idea of vehicle. It's one of these white vans that I, everyone seems to have now. It comes down here. If you're worried about drawing vehicles and cars, it's not going to be much to this. It's got an angle. It's angled down there. Angled here. Now, I'm hoping many of you are sort of working through these drawings yourself as I'm going along. Um, it's probably the best thing to do. I'm just keeping an eye on Right, these two characters, um, let's just draw them in because I see them as quite important to my composition. They're obviously trying to make a sale. Um, I'm going to make this lady a little bigger. Up here a bit more. Just a small difference there. Yes, right. And I will now put in uh, some of these figures here. In in the um, market scene we did before, there were a number of figures uh, in there and, and a number of them in the background. And if I can concentrate just on a few figures um, and then add any others that I want to do so a little later on. Um, uh, there's a sort of conversation going on here. Uh, let's just put, there's a fellow talking to a lady. Let's just put these standing fairly straight talking to her. And then she, she's, um, She's out in the light a little bit more and they're having a conversation with each other. Uh, I ought to, this is my brother actually, I've mentioned him before. Um, Yes, my brother. So let's stick him here. He's striding out. He's obviously doing the shopping. Got a big bag carrying his legs. He looks a bit, let's bulk him out a bit more. Yeah, he's there, he's quite a tall fellow anyway. And uh, this lady who's walking with her child, I quite like that, so let's put her here. And she's walking away from us. I think we'll go for that.
And she's got a little boy here. He's obviously smaller than her. And I, you see, I, I put very little detail in about the, the legs. I'm really sort of dealing with the head and the torso and uh, as much as possible, the little lad is walking with her there. Um, in the same way as there is a, a bench that they're selling things from here, there's probably going to be a bench there and um, maybe someone there. I'll, I'll put another figure in here. Now this is entirely up to you. If you you're, um, add or take away the figures as you wish, this, this may well get lost, this figure. Um, and my brother's a bit big and chop him down to size a bit. Got a hat on. Right, let's just see where we go. Let's put uh, some of these things in here. And there are sort of boxes of things we can bear in mind. All right, so there we go. So I, I've got a feeling that's, as, let's put another, another umbrella or pop-up tent there. That's really as far as I want to go. Uh, do I want to say something about this green vehicle at the back? Maybe, maybe I will. Um, that might be useful to say something about that. Um, there, that's my drawing of the figures, their relationship with the stalls, with each other, um, and the relationship of the umbrellas with the background and that's as far as I want to go with my drawing. So I'm going to hand over to you just to see where you've got to. Uh, if you want to make changes as I've made them by all means do so. If you want to stick with how it is on the photograph because that's easier then yeah please do that as well. Make her head a bit smaller. Um, yeah, there we go. So this is the second stage. Uh, it is about putting the light colours in. Uh, the colours that will uh, come out light when you have the finished painting in. So uh, um, at this stage is often one which involves a lot of water. Uh, if, if you want something to be white, the white of the paper in your finished painting then try and avoid painting that at this stage. Um, I, I, I don't know whether that is the case with this one, specifically white, but um, we'll, we'll see uh, at this stage. And so we're, we're putting in a whole lot of light colours um, and I'm going to start up the top. I, I'm going to put in the sky, fairly warm sky, because this is a warm scene uh, that, that we're, we're dealing with here, albeit a little um, austere. Uh, and, um, but I won't uh, put in, I, I won't put anything of the trees uh, at this stage. I'll do that later. I can start at the top, putting in the sky. Um, I'm going to bring some uh, light colors down so that I can do something with them on these buildings, which, which I've altered very slightly in the background. Uh, I'm going to, um, going to bring in a, a, a warm color, uh, maybe a bit of raw sienna, but very lightly so, uh, so that these umbrellas and everything aren't necessarily just the cold white of the paper at this stage. Um, and and make some sort of a statement of the warmth that is down here on the on the ground. That that is quite grey, uh, but I don't want to put the grey on it at the moment. It, it's essentially um, got warmth in it, although it is uh, a, a cooler sort of grey. So I'm going to be using uh, this mop brush, 
which is a squirrel brush uh, and has the big double advantage of holding a lot of water, but also being able to go to, to a really fine point. So I'm going to use that probably for all everything at this stage and um, a lot of water that's going into it. So the colour I will start off with the sky. Is everyone seeing what I'm doing? Yeah. Uh, is French ultramarine, which I've got down here. And I'm going to bring that down around the umbrellas, the chimneys. And quite often if you're leaving white spaces, uh, uh, go, go ahead and do so because um, you never know where they might be quite useful to you as the painting goes on. So. Um, now I'm going to be painting, I'm conscious that I'm painting uh, trees over this lot here. Um, and so where I want my warmth particularly, and I'll just bring a little bit more uh, of the blue, uh, in, in, is this area here. Right. So let's leave that behind and move on to uh, also up the top. And that, that's all very wet up the top here at the moment. Uh, I'm moving on now to uh, the warmth of these buildings behind, um, which I'll go to some raw sienna and put that in here and I'm going to play around with the colors of these buildings a little bit especially this one here because I um, in the photograph it's it's a white building against a white umbrella and and um, I think I'll, I'll change that and make that um, a slightly different colour, in keeping hopefully with the sort of thing that they have in France anyway. Um, I'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, I'm uh, I'll continue with this raw sienna and um, and put some of that warmth down here uh, I'm going to do also some on these umbrellas but as I said I, I don't really want to overcook that and in a second I will actually, having put the colour down there, I'll get a bit of tissue and, and, and just wipe, wipe it off a little bit so, so that, that they're almost completely white umbrellas and, and the same also with um, the, the vehicle and where these two people's silhouettes are shown uh, and and what's going on here right let's um let's revisit some of these things this this building at the back uh, i i think they're fairly um utilitarian type of buildings these aren't they but Let's just add a little bit of um, interest to I'm picking up some red. Let's just um, just put some of that down here. Yeah, that that's that will just help to 
lift the umbrella away from the building a bit and um, this vehicle this white van I'll, I'll just get rid of some of the um, uh, I've got some blue running down there. I want to keep these fairly, fairly white, but uh, there we go. Um, that's all that I want to do at the moment for um, putting down the light colours. The, the sky eventually, although I'm going to put some woods, some forest trees in here, the, the, this bit of the sky I'm not going to be touching at all. It will be, that's how it will be in the finished picture. Um, I will be working over some of these uh, warm raw sienna uh, colors to, to um, particularly this, this gray, these gray um, pavements here, um, the gray but I'll be painting over something that's quite warm and then I'm adding various colours to all the people and what goes on around them in the background. So that's all I'm doing for this second stage of the page for the picture. It's very loose, it's very wet. Um, the, the, all the detail, the next stage is going to be about putting darker colours on um, and obviously within that there will be some detail uh, and then the last stage will, will be specifically about the details. So at this stage, we want to keep the whole thing pretty loose and pretty light. With this next stage, we are putting in the darks, um, various colours that we'll be wanting to use later on, you know, for instance, like the fruit and uh, um, and the windows and things like that um, and importantly the shadows that we'll be uh, using here not not the very darkest of the shadows um, and not details as such but but putting in the shadows yeah. now <clears throat> I'm going to start at the top because it's easier to save uh, smudging it uh, the top left it as much as possible, at least come down as much as I can. And here you'll see that um, I left this uh, lighter, more water put in here on, uh, on both sides, especially on this side, because that's where I want to have my dark leaves. Uh, let's go back to this Italian one. If you remember these dark leaves that we had up here, they will, work much better if the background to them is lighter. So I'm going to put in um, a, a much lighter tree or trees or whatever than are shown in this photograph here. Um, and I can afford to be a bit darker with what's going on with the, the trees here because that helps to project forward all the the light bits that are showing in the buildings and the umbrellas and everything. But this, this bit here, uh, I specifically want to keep that light. So, and I'm also, um, I guess this picture must have been taken at the height of summer where you get so many trees all looking dark and um, unlike spring or autumn, that, that there's a blandness about it. So, um, I'm trying to avoid that a little bit. I'm, I'm going to put in something which is a different green here from here. So, uh, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, um, I'm going to use uh, this color, which is Aurelian. It's very similar to cobalt uh, yellow. I'm going to do that and and put some cobalt blue in. Now that's going to give me a fairly light green there. 
almost almost heading to the edge of viridian um, and so I, I, I'm going to put that in here now that's much too light and one of the things of course with watercolor is that you've got to realize that uh, um, things are going to lighten and it, if at all possible uh, go for, for darker than you think you you, you need to um, <clears throat> So let's go back to the color, get a stronger mixture of the pig, two pigments. It's still the Aurelian. Um, a lot of this is going to be covered over with these leaves I've been talking to you about. And, And I'm very happy for the edges here to be fairly soft. Um, and therefore, the, the wetness that I put in there, I'll, I'll let this green that I'm putting in here merge into it gradually. All right, let's call that a day. And um, See where we go with that. So I'm going to move across to here now and make this a little bit darker. Um, let's um, let's try out some lemon yellow. Let's use that with some ultramarine blue. Okay. And. Taking that around the umbrellas, around the chimneys. And I'm going to bring in, I'm gonna bring in some other colors here. Uh, let's just bring in some uh, raw sienna just to, so that the whole thing doesn't become a diatribe of greens. Let's just bring in a bit of that there. Can you say the colours again, please, Mike? Yeah, the colours, I, I used um, lemon yellow. Um, and let's just soften some edges here. I, I, I just cleaned my brush off and picked up some paint. I used lemon yellow and ultramarine blue. Uh, I, I brought in some uh, uh, raw sienna. I'm just picking up some strong ultramarine blue and putting in little bits of blobs here, which might suggest some depth to the woods the trees just and if I'm putting in almost pure pigment here that will sort of paint itself right is that dark enough I'm asking myself um, I'm going to make this bit a bit darker down here, where it goes away. So I'll bring in some of that blue, the ultramarine blue. Right. That's enough done on those trees. Uh, all right, I move, I'm, I'm moving down with the picture here. So the uh, rooftops, um, if I go to Burnt Sienna and add a little bit of this vermilion, say, and put in um, 
make that a stronger color, it's too watery. And put in, so I'm using the, uh, the, the point of this squirrel brush. Yeah. To suggest those rooftops. And let's put in some darker colors here to do with the blinds. Uh, so I'm, I've gone to burnt umber here and just putting in suggestions of they nearly all seem to I, I'm changing the, the style of this house by the way uh, from these rather boring slats they've got going down so and, and where I'm putting the windows in. I'm just making a suggestion at the moment of the blinds, leaving lots of bits of uh, unpainted. This, this, this line of course is, is uh, actually perspective-wise is going up towards my eye level here. This one is virtually on, on my eye level and this one of course is higher up here. Um, right, so we'll we'll deal with that now whilst it's still a bit wet and put in some shadow underneath the rooftops and, and so forth. I'm going to ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and getting a, a color which is a sort of bluey gray color like that. Let's make it a bit more blue and um, here I'm going to put in in fact I won't do any more I'll come back to that in a moment I wanted to bring that shadow down over these windows but I'll just wait for those to dry a little bit I'll come back to that in in a moment uh, that, that's fine it's no no problem so uh, I'm going to move into uh, bringing some color into the market scene um, and <clears throat> now in this Italian one we did there were lots of garments and that's what caught my attention everywhere seemed to be hanging clothes catching the light and showing the shadows uh, not so much in this one it's more of a utilitarian sort of market it seems to me but um, nevertheless although this is vegetables down here I might suggests that there are other things going on here and for that I, I'm, I'm just dropping in colors which could be useful uh, later on uh, such as uh, let's, let's say there, there could be some some red things hanging down around here um, now th this is this is where you can make up exactly what you want um, and we'll be covering a lot of this up with uh, shadow anyway in a moment uh, so let's find two other colors that might be interested in um, things in a market And if these all bleed into one another, then that's great, so much the better. And we leave some, some little areas of light which uh, could play into our hands later on. 
so there's stuff going on there in, in the background um, similarly let's, let's let's get a couple of greens underway put a, some sort of things going on here I'm painting over these struts uh, not not getting too fussed about those um, I'm inclined to think that I will treat them with as as um, a lighter touch as possible uh, uh, a bit later on. Uh, now there's this green van here, which I think I will put in, and um, it's horrible viridian uh, viridian colours. Let's see if I can. I kind of had that before, didn't I? Let's see if I can get a viridian green. I'm using cobalt blue and beryllium. Uh, now, I'll, I'll, yeah, so something like that. And um, so there is a van here, which which may or may not be of value to us a little later, uh, which you, we can see bits of it. Uh, all right, let's move on. I'm dropping colors in now as I go around, uh, where I think it might help just to soften up and make the market a little more interesting. Uh, I've got a white van here and I'm deliberately keeping that because I want the these two people to be silhouetted uh, against that. Um, but my brother's shopping. Uh, put something in there for that and uh, I'm, I'm going to leave the figures. I think I'm going to leave the figures at the moment and uh, just pop and 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 any little um, gaps and marks and things like that that, that uh, you're able to leave you know so much the better um, let's yeah we'll come down here um, Leaving the figures, I'm going to put in some produce now, which is sale. Again, you can decide whatever it is on the market. Uh, th these uh, uh, wooden boxes that they 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 have that they seem to pack an awful lot in. Uh, put some of that in. Just bring in some. Strong colours here, maybe. So, can you see what I'm doing? Just, just working my way around. Let's bring in some green produce. Which most of this is going to be in shadow. Uh, some of it will have little bits of light catching it. Um, and that's all decisions that you can make as you go through your painting. I mean, not, no, not, none of our paintings is going to look exactly the same. Um, maybe a lot of orangey stuff that they're selling. Um, green box in. That's a little bit too strong. So there we are. We've got um, a 
I just realised there's a mirror in this. Uh, you can see through this fan, can't you? Uh, a little bit. So um, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to just follow that building on a little bit. Come back to that in a moment. Yeah, just um, maybe pop a window or two in. I'll do that a little bit later on. Now, this is all drying up here. Um, and that's great. Uh, let's, um, yeah, uh, and I'll do that. So I'm now thinking of bringing some various shadows into, we got some of these boxes that we were talking about, which are quite nice to have. Um, we might be able to make something of underneath the table. Right, I'm going to start playing around with shadows now, um, moving back down the painting um, and these are not the darker shadows, they're not the details, but uh, they're something that we will need to put in at, at this stage. Okay. Colours I'm using for this, uh, I'll use ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt sienna, but I, I think I'll, um, I'll, I'll begin with having quite a watery solution of that and just putting it on that side of the, these umbrellas. And in fact, we've got some marks there. Uh, got them. Can you say the colors again, please, Mike? Yeah, this, this is just um, a light gray color with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna um, on that. Um, I'll, I'll just pop a bit up there. there. I'm just trying to avoid smudging. I normally work with my paintings more or less upright, so I, I never have a problem with smudging it, but I'm, I'm, on this occasion, um, and so I'm putting if I need to put a few little shadows in around some of the umbrellas, I'm doing that now. You just take a look around, see what you think you might need to do. And we'll be coming back to those later on. So we'll see how that goes. This, this area here underneath what we see underneath the um, uh, the umbrella, uh, I'll be coming in and putting something darker in that, probably in the last stage when I'm looking at doing detail. Now, now I'll revisit what's going on uh, up the top here. This this is fairly dry, I think. No, it's not, not at all dry. Um, so I think I'll leave that till we come back to it so, and I'll bring in some shadows up here and work my way down. So I'm going back to ultramarine blue and putting some burnt sienna in. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of shadow work here and you using this brush still uh, but doing quite a little bit of detail as I go around here. In fact, I'm thinking what I might do is just to give that a, a quick little whiz over with the hairdryer.
I'm conscious that the light is coming from the left to the right. It's very much, you can see it by these strong shadows that are cast by the legs of the um, pop-up tents and, and by all the other people, by the shadows that are coming across here. In fact, I'm going to make use of those to have a, a dapple sort of light there. Um, and the face of uh, these umbrellas and the face of the buildings are, are quite light. Okay, I've just given that a little drawing. So I'm going back now to uh, the, the colors that I want to use. I want to make this as blue as I can. So I'm just picking up more ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, and I'll be coming back and mixing that up uh, from time to time. Let's work on these buildings and then come over and, and move down here. So. The shadow is cast underneath the overhangs of the roofs, comes down and it does all sorts of interesting things to um, let's just um, and similarly here. I'm just touching in shadows. So let's see what we're going to do with this. Um, veranda. So veranda. Let's um, Okay, that's a good strong shadow up there. Let's see how we get on with the rest of it. And then come over to here and um, I'm going to put in some of the leaves here, knowing that I will come in a bit later on and do something a little bit darker still. So let's go back to my Uh, now, for this, uh, I, th I think I'll switch away from the shadow and I'll, I'll come up with some um, f fairly dark green. So I'm, let's just see how it goes. I'm going to put in some ultramarine blue, um, some lemon yellow, and then let's add some raw sienna, uh, some burnt sienna, and just see what sort of colours I'm getting here. I don't want it to be too obviously green. Let's add a bit of, okay. Um, and here I'm using my brush uh, with the points and just make that darker still. It'll, it'll always dry lighter. Um, yeah, it's a bit darker, that's better. And 
you you want to use very thinner brush for some of these marks that's fine so I'm creating this idea that the tree is casting its leaves and I'm going to vary the darkness of this. I've added a bit of water to some of these outside uh, leaves, just a little bit of water just to Um, I'm going to put a bit of colour in that, just pick up some crimson, I just feel just one or two little crimson marks, adding that in here because I, I just felt a bit flat, that green. I picked up that crimson paint um, and where it touches the paint it will work its way in. And in fact, I'm using a rigger brush now and I'll make a few, few little marks. Okay, that's something, some statement about a tree. And we'll be seeing some shadows come over here um, in a moment when we deal with that. So back to the shadows. Um, going back to a blue uh, rather than the green, the shadow for this lot. So I've just got rid of what I had done there. Go back to French ultramarine. A little bit of burnt sienna, too much of this burnt sienna and it becomes too brown. And let's just see what we can do here. So I'm going to work my way down here to um, give a, a suggestion of things being picked and uh, things showing underneath the, the umbrellas, uh, sort of, we did that. O occasionally, it, be aware of where the figures are that you've drawn, and particularly as the light is coming from left to right. You see there, I put a little bit of dark around where that figure is. Actually, that figure's in the dark anyway. So let's do this one, uh, uh, something like that. That, that will just help to show that figure stand up. This, this particular figure is in the dark, so I, I want it to be dark. I'll get rid of that now. Uh, but she, this lady, uh, now there is um, a sort of table here with produce that she's no doubt selling. So let's put in suggestion when you're coming to the edges remember i mentioned this before when you're coming to the edges of a picture try not to worry too much about the detail at that stage and wherever you can leave uh little bits of light things light uh, showing then that will be uh, helpful later on so we'll just move around put something down here there's this little lad here let's put something around him so that it's going to help him show up a bit um, we will be coming in with darker uh, paint late, later on so we can emphasize that. So I'm just uh, putting that across there. Yeah, it's the, sh the sh shadow and put that there maybe. Yeah, keep that all as simple as possible. And um, right, so I'm Moving on, if you're painting this at the moment, I'm, I'm sort of taking 
myself along uh, the market stalls here, uh, leaving uh, little bits of things light. We can always come in and add some dark late, later on. Uh, I think what I will do is um, put some dark underneath the pop-up tents. I, I've run out of paint, so I've just got to go back and add a bit, mix up a bit more. Um, okay, so I'll put um, And similarly, this will help give us an idea of what's going on underneath the uh, the, the tents. Okay, come back down to what's going on here. Something a bit stronger. And everything all right? You're still seeing my painting, what I'm doing? Yep. Okay. Uh, that's my brother, so. Make sure he stands out well. And I will also start casting shadows made by the people. It is um, and this lady, we're going to join up the, the, the people uh, to the shadows a little later on. But it's a good idea to put them in now. Right. Uh, Interesting noises there. So I'm sure you're all working along at the moment, just filling up the details, putting in uh, the, 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 the getting the the atmosphere, the feel, the market. Um, yeah, let's. Um, Lots of shadows being cast by people's feet. I'm, I'm still leaving the people out, as I, I think you'll see. Someone's asking, what are the yellowish bits underneath the tables? Oh, they are um, boxes or things that are being chucked under the table, which um, I'm trying to remember not to paint over totally. Uh, if you look in the photograph, you'll you'll see you'll see them there. Um, and and now I'm working my way around what's happening on these vegetables. A lot of them are covered with shadows, but every now and then you get glimpses of light. Uh, and I, I think you can, you can sort of, as you work along with your brush, you, you can pick some of that up. Um, Uh, 
a lot of this area here it's got light shining on it underneath the table So the photograph will help you a great deal here. I'm, I'm working around these uh, things that are holding up the table, part of which are, if you see what I'm doing here, part of which are in the shade. So if I just take a brush along there, we'll be able to bring those out a little later on. This stage of the painting is the longest one. Uh, the, the final one, when we, we finish off, will be much quicker. So it's, it's always going to take a bit longer, this one. So I've got um, I'll just carry on with the shadows. Then there's this shadow that's cast uh, uh, across here. And it's on the van, isn't it? And it goes down. There's that. No, don't play with that. No, no, Toby. Toby, no. Toby, no. Toby, no. No, no. Toby, no. Whoever's talking to Toby. Sorry. That's all right. I've muted you. Right, so we're moving on with that's the shadow on the van. Let's just carry on putting some of these vegetables. A lot of these vegetables are all covered with shadow. Come back to those in a moment. Someone asked about these boxes. I'm just sort of going around them a little bit here, which may they may prove valuable. And we've got shadows coming from all of this lot. This will all be useful later on. Um, we've got a shadows coming from where the stands are, and there's a stand that comes here. It's a sort of shadow that goes up here. So I've been working along just imagining where the shadows are using the, the source photograph as some sort of help. Got there now. And the sh this shadow extends out beyond the table and goes off. I don't want to get too bogged down in exactly what's happening here. Good. 
this lady's got shadows coming from her and she's got shadows cast by her here around the vegetables I've, I've left all the figures till the end that's don't have to do that by any means but um, we'll see if that helps us uh, right that's what's going on here now I'm going to move to this area um, and put some of the shadows in that are reflected uh, that are cast down by the trees we're, we're getting to the end of uh, blue ultramarine blue um, i'll make these a much bluer shadow i think than i have done that i'll add a bit of crimson um, yeah, so we, we've got here, and whereas in this uh, source photograph, we've got this hard shadow here. This is all part of me wanting to soften up the painting a little bit. I'm going to have some cast shadows uh, coming out here, and a bit like we painted at the top here, uh, these in some places I'm going to just water them down a little bit. We may well come over and add something a little bit um, darker to these shadows. Let's just put a few little marks here. Um, don't think I need to put too much more in here. It's just uh, an indication of the shadows. Right. And um, I'd like to just leave it at that uh, at this stage before we move on and put some detail in. I think I, I can pretty much do that. Um, yeah, that's where I'm going uh, with this third stage. And then that allows us to come back and put some detail in. Uh, the figures will probably take the longest, but the rest of it all will, will, will follow on quite quickly. Right, so we're going to go into the, the last of these four stages that we've been dealing with so often, which is the, the detail. Um, and in, in this particular instance, it's also going to be the, um, the figures as well. Uh, so um, let's, let's work our way around this one now, where do I begin? Um, as much as I can, I'll, I'll always begin up at the top. Um, and uh, okay, I'm going to mix up a, a dark color. Uh, I'll go back to my ultramarine blue. And um, in fact, I won't do that. There'll be one or two little things. I'm, I'm going to put in some of the skin tones uh, and just let that. So I'll use some raw sienna, something probably a little more, a little stronger than you think it needs to be. But um, and I'm going to pop those in there 
because I just want them to dry um, before I get back to them. And uh, this lady's legs, her arms, little lad's arms, this, this person's face, uh, my brother's, my brother's face and legs and arms. I'm just going around putting these in. There's this person who's having a conversation with this lady. She's got her arms and um, I, I think I'll I'll take her out of her trousers, I think, and just put um, some legs there that we can cover up in a moment. And uh, this lady's got, he needs to do something with his arms. Right, that's a little lad's legs. This summer after all. Right, so it's just popped in some of that there. Uh, that, that will be drying in a moment. Um, whilst I'm letting that dry, I'll, um, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've made that too dark. So what I'm gonna do is just, go back a stage I'll, I'll just lighten that a bit dry it quickly and as our wetter tissue here and just lift some of that out of the way right that's just light Okay, I'm going to my dark, dark colours now that I'm going to bring into some of the dark shadows on the buildings, um, work, work them into uh, the darkness around the people, the figures, and the market generally. So I'm, I've gone back to ultramarine blue. Uh, and I brought in, I want this to be a, a, quite a strong colour here, uh, and oh, let me just click on that and, uh, yeah, there we go. I want this to be a strong colour, and uh, so I'm going to mix the pigment quite thickly, and uh, where necessary, I'll add a little bit of neutral tint, which I'm pointing at here at the moment. But um, squeeze out the water on my brush and put in some of the... In fact, I will add a bit of neutral tint to this. Here, yeah, let's just bring some of that detail in. I'm joined here by Sue, my wife. Let's see what's going on. Wondering what I do with myself all these days. So these are little accents, if you like. Let's um, let's do something with this balcony. Uh, balcony, balcony, right? Um, I'm going to switch to my rigger for this and, and get a fine line. 
make it a good dark one and add a bit of neutral tint and just put in some suggestion of suggestion of the balcony there and depends on how much more detail you want to put in that's entirely up to you I think I did make that a little bit too dark there but that doesn't matter it'll it'll do at the moment so let's just let that okay move move away from that I'm going back over to the left now so that um, I don't smudge things and uh, look to see whether I want to do anything more up here to where the leaves are and uh, I think I will I'll I'll get some neutral tint and some crimson and something I neutral tint is like Payne's grey uh, but it's uh, I, just to make a few little marks it's quite dark up here anyway so I, I don't think I need to overwork it right that will do it for there uh, now let's move down to what's going on in here. Uh, this is where I can accentuate the uh, depth of shadows and the contrast and really push the values um, in this, uh, this painting. So let's just bring in some, and I'll, I'll go around, I'll deal with the people at the same time. Under here, There's a, someone serving, let's put a figure in there. This first figure I come to, um, what, what clothes should we put on this one? Let, let's keep them quite uh, light for the moment and, uh, and just bring in a, little bit of shadow there and may, maybe give them some darker some darker pants. We really don't need to say much more than that for that far away figure. Let's go back to what's going on here. What colour did you use for the figures Mike? Um, well uh, what for the uh, the yeah. skin? Yeah, I used burnt sienna with a little bit of vermilion, just just to look, they all look as if they've got great suntans. But but um, uh, we'll we'll see. And I just wanted them to stand out a little bit. Uh, okay. Um, now this lady here. Um, Let's let's give her a red dress. I, I, I quite like her to stand out. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, my red, my light red, and uh, she is meant to be walking away from us. So we'll we'll get that sorted in a moment. And. Um, yeah, we'll give her a a red dress and and we'll give her little lad a blue top some kind so he's got a blue top and maybe um, he's got some dark pants on as well so we'll 
we try and put in as little as possible to get get away with these figures. So I'm going back to my dark colour here and um, I'm putting that round the dark side of her head and the dark side of her body here. Similarly with her lad and and see if that's going to be enough to make her stand out. In fact, if I bring in some darkness just on this side of her, that will help her to stand out a bit. Right, let's move on. So that's, that's the process really that I'm, I may come in and touch up uh, some, details on one or two figures later on but but that's basically how this painting is progressing now just getting as much and, and lots of little bits of paint, uh, paper left unpainted little colors showing through uh, will be useful let's um let's have this chap wearing or whoever it is, we're again wearing something white uh, and I will put them into shadow cast there, little shadows cast there across that person okay um, and so I'm jumping around with the paints that I've got mixed here. Some, some of them are very dark, some are, I'm making lighter. I, I, I've come up to this figure here and where, wherever I think I can simplify the, the, the backgrounds uh, into just a block of colour in, in some way then a block of colour or tone, uh, I'll do that just to, especially when, when it gets a bit far away from you. We don't want to have too much detail. Yeah, here we go. So I think we're doing all right at the moment. Let's, let's deal with other and put a a shadow, make that a bit stronger, put a shadow across him. There, he's standing out. That's as much as we need to do with him. And this lady who's got her back to us, she's also wearing a white garment. So um, let's, let's make sure she is wearing a white garment. And uh, has she got any shadow on her? Maybe. And yeah, let's put some shadow on her there and bring in some We would take we've taken the trousers off, haven't we? So we just bring Okay. She's there and then this character here. Uh, I'll put a, a yellow vest on that person and bring a shadow across them. And give them some darker pants. So again, that's the process we're going through. I'm sure you're all doing that now. I 
I guess you might have done these figures before. I mean, may, maybe that we have a better time to do them. I work my way around under the table. These stands that are holding the table up. If I want to add any accents within the vegetables that are here, I can do that. And I'm going to put in these two people, uh, the silhouettes. There. So these brushes are pretty good and the main I'm still using that for a lot of the detail. I'm trying to keep my paint as uh, as clear of water as possible. So it's strong. Let's just see how Uh, right, um, the vehicle windows, now they really are quite strong, aren't they? So let's put those in. I've got a tiny little accent. Yeah. And let's pop in some of these uprights. Right, speed through this, because I'm almost at my allotted time. Let's deal with this woman. Put a shadow on her.
And finally, what I wanted to show you, just two things. One is what we're going to do with this area here. And I'm going to have to do this with um, my hairdryer just to speed things up. Uh, dry it all off. I'm going to do something with that, just do one or two little bits and pieces here, and that is the final finish. I'm going back to my large brush. Uh, I want to get this uh, a greyness in here. So let's just see. Uh, this is someone will say, what colours have I used? I'm, I'm really sort of picking up what I've got left in here and seeing if that will do. I want a sort of greyness, um, and I'll get that with a bit more blue and and maybe um, some burnt sienna. Let's just see. That's gone a bit too brown. Blue and uh, let's see if I can I'm working over the top of this. I'm running out of paint, so let's have a quick remix. A little bit of blue, brown. And try that. I'm, I'm speeding this up uh, because we're coming to the end of this. But very well, I'll do the finish up. Right, this is all pretty dry, and I'm just mixing up. It's not quite dry yet. I've got a dark sludgy colour here. I'm just um, adding one or two little bits here and also I'm wanting to just mess up this area a little bit more. So I'll just put a bit of paint on that. And the last thing I'll do is I'll just go around these 
areas and see if I need to add in anything that's very much darker. And I probably do. Now, Lois, at some point we're going to have to stop this, but I, I just want to put in a few little details here. Um, just to add some idea of this lady here. And you can do this with your pictures later on if you think that it needs a little bit more. Uh, so, some of these figures, for instance, just need a little bit more definition. Okay. The last thing I'll do and I've just used my drinking water for this to say going and changing water is um, see whether I need to touch in any little light bits of ref uh, highlights and so forth maybe maybe on her shoulders um, her little lads there might be one little, few little bits here. This is um, uh, a gouache, which um, is quite a useful thing to use, but if possibly sparingly. Um, oops, that's too much. And that brings the painting to a close. <laughs>